Better communication skills. To communicate is the interchange of information, opinions, and thoughts, by signs, speeches, or writings. When you communicate, you engage in conversation or talk about something. Conversation requires skills such as patience, knowledge of grammar, willingness to listen and understand others, and either is the knowledge of one's ability. Bonds are what binds relationships together, as an agreement or friendship. To communicate with a person or group, you put feelings, emotions, ideas, or thoughts together to form a relationship. Either way, you are to build up rather than, tear down the bond of communication. There are many basic relationship networks for communication, such as partners, family, friends, social groups, workshops, and even public speaking as a, world-class communicator. With family, you communicate sharing emotions, feelings, ideas, and thoughts to keep the family structure. With a partner, you communicate sharing emotions, feelings, ideas, and thoughts to form companionship or marriage vows. With a friend, you communicate sharing experiences, feelings, ideas, and thoughts to form a friendship. In a group or workshop setting, you communicate comparing ideas or thoughts to reach a goal or to complete an assignment. In a social group, you communicate by comparing experiences, ideas, and thoughts for a support system. And in any of those relationship networks, your fellowship and shared attitudes, goals, and interests can form the community. A community is a group of people living in the same place or having a particular characteristic in common. Communication is an everyday necessity, whether you are face to face or on an electronic device. 21 Signs of Bad Communication Skills 1. Avoiding direct contact, you hide behind technology and go out the way to avoid facing the person that you want to contact. Or leave emails unanswered and avoid respecting them. But when you communicate, you have a lot to say that could be said in two sentences. 2. Avoiding conflict. You pretend certain disagreements didn't happen rather than, just facing the conflict head on. 3. Assuming malice, you often think others show intentional rudeness in their actions. Unless you know them to be rude people. Just acknowledge that their actions may have been unconscious motives. 4. Communicating too narrowly, you withhold exposure that could broaden your relationship bonds, which limits the ability to align and solve problems. Rather than, communicating mistakes of growth and processes along the journey effectively. 5. Constantly interrupting. You don't wait for others to completely stop talking, before interjecting and giving advice that is related to your past experiences. 6. Constantly repeating the same conversation, you often repeat things to memorize new information and better understand old information. Just another reason to level up your emotional intelligence, EQ. 7. Equating your experience, you tell long-winded tales of your experiences to similar situations, and often you just want to be admirable or show empathy rather than lending support. 8. Expecting top communication skills, you force everyone to be good communicators by telling fairy tale stories, rather than being honest about new strategies, strengths, weaknesses, or updates. Or simply asking the questions that you need to ask. 9. Failure of weaker points, you avoid observing or pointing out red flags and opening the door when it is time to end conversations. Find out what isn't working, and either can be done without doing it abruptly. 10. Floundering, you ramble on endlessly without a significant point, rather than just being clear and concise. 11. Inconsistency, you often get lost in translation, and so you may assume things or remain in isolation when you aren't on the same page as others. Rather than collaborating or empowering with organized clear and concise communication. 12. Making too many assumptions, you talk around the group of people you are communicating with, rather than promoting understanding and finding common ground. Just simply articulate by executing, presenting, and proposing solutions. 13. Making excuses for your behavior, with sentences such as, it's just honesty, another person made me do it, another person made them feel this way, I am better than other people, it isn't as bad as other people, they have had it bad, or it is just who they are. 14. Multitasking, you multitask only when you want to ignore others or want them to know how important you are, rather than just giving them your undivided attention. 15. No communication strategy, you lack persistent engagement or interaction with others, and curbing confusion and opposition early in the process will improve your communication strategies. 16. Not listening enough, you don't acknowledge that everyone has diverse needs, and you avoid upleveling your emotional intelligence, EQ, as a leader and so you don't listen much. 17. Right message, wrong time, you try to convince your heart and spirit of something your mind knows is a lie. This was said by Shannon L. Alder. You become confused and then deliver a message early, which is supposed to have been delivered later. Rather than acknowledging that patience is not an absence of action, but timing, and it waits on the right time to act, for the right principles. This was said by Fulton J. Sheen. 18. Poor choice of words, you choose words that don't explain the importance of things. Rather than, leveling up on English grammar. 19. Using filler words, you constantly use meaningless phrases, 
sounds, or words that mark a hesitation or pause in speech. Such as ah, ahem, at the end of the day, believe me, be that as it may, duh, air, hum, ha, huh, I guess, I mean, I suppose, it is what it is, like, okay, or something, right, so, so be it, ugh, uh, um, well, you know, you see, etc. 20. Using qualifiers, you constantly exaggerate conversations, using phrases or words that will decrease or increase the validity of certain situations or things. 21. Waiting instead of listening, you engage and wait but avoid listening. Clear advice over validation. Giving advice is an opinion or recommendation offered as a guide to moral action or conduct. To give pure advice, you give it clearly, without intent or malice. Validation is an approval, compliment, or confirmation that can be given or received. When giving validation it is desired and deserving when receiving validation, it is to be appreciated, but neither has to be done with force. Some people hide behind fear with cowardice, evasiveness, or indecisiveness. Others don't want to hear the negative results or rather not appeal to a list of commands. I hear people often repeating the quote, keep it 100, when no one does. This reveals an unsubmissive nature, but more people ought to take a step back to form better bonds and communication skills. If you are giving advice, clear advice works over validation, and if more people gave clear advice validation wouldn't necessarily be needed. When social trends change to new perspectives, it doesn't mean views will be honorable for everyone. All this leaves less time, to be open-minded and willing to accept constructive criticism. You ought to be willing to learn from your mistakes, but this involves acknowledging when you have made them. You can't be on the defense every time someone judges you. So, judge with a righteous judgment just as Jesus said to do, and avoid playing the bully roles conventional criticism often imposes on victims. Who is my neighbor? It is a person who shows mercy upon you. Reflections that talk about a brother and neighbor in comparison to strengthening bonds of communication and showing compassion for others within communities is what Jesus was referring to in Matthew 18:22. He said, to forgive your brother not until seven times, but, until seventy times seven. Typically, if you forgive less, you love less. Also, in, Matthew 22 39, he said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. To love you need to be in a forgiving mood, and to forgive you need to be in a loving mood. If you don't love yourself, you won't love the neighbors. It is possible to spot evildoers and take a stand for what is right. And stop promoting getting off the hook, to feel justified about things of no significant value. This is when you use your best energy. Repent, have faith, and believe in Jesus Christ to inherit eternal life. Whether or not you are enslaved to selfless pride, trust in him. He is your brother and neighbor in the spirit of love, peace, joy, and happiness. Once you believe in him and accept his atonement, you can be saved. Adult to adult teens righteous conversation. Teens learn interpersonal skills in school, they also acknowledge whether or not their parents are righteous conversationalists. If you gossip or trash talk, normally it will be difficult for them to allow you to lead in conversations without continually interrupting you before finishing. A list of things not to do. 1. Compete while talking by gossiping and trash talking. 2. Get too personal, and don't leave space for an exit during conversations. 3. Start long controlling conversations, and don't allow them to finish the thought process. 4. Give selfish opinions. 5. Hog the spotlight. 6. Not a full observer of the law. 7. Interrogation. 8. Unwilling to share positive thoughts. 9. Don't acknowledge them as conversational partners during conversations. Modifying conversations with teens. First and foremost, strive to become a full observer of the law, and avoid leading your teens into breaking laws. They learn what an observer of the law is in school. To avoid starting long conversations that will lead to an interrogation of their character. Only use interrogation when you are concerned about a child molester luring them, and when determining whether to contact local authorities. Give them time to finish the thought process of what you have first said, before speaking. And always give them space and time to exit the conversations. Be willing to share your positive thoughts without backlash, and avoid competing with them or giving selfish opinions. Remember they will only benefit from a person giving them clear advice, not validation. To stop hogging conversations with your teens. Acknowledge them as a conversational partner, bypassing leadership during conversations promptly. It isn't all about what you want from a conversation, but more about what they can achieve from having the conversation itself. Communication without anger. Use the available time to exercise self-awareness, make clear sense with actions. The things you can't control just let them go. Long as it's not harming innocent people's lives. Avoid becoming humiliated or overwhelmed with others, remember to relax, and communication is the key. Improving family communication. Healthy and productive, communication is essential for families because of the intimacy levels. 
Regular talks about development, process, and progress are topics that can make you appreciate the family structure and want to improve it. Family communication styles are what sets the tone for interactions with others outside the family such as future relationships, schoolmates, society, or even the workplace. Creating opportunities to effectively talk, insisting on healthy meals, finding out the highs and lows, date night with your kids, using the 80-20th second listening rule, using technology to the family's advantage, and creating your righteous family traditions can help to increase communication productivity in relationships. Why prayer helps your children and their children. A biological parent can take their grandkids out of the home if they can prove the neglect with the court's permission. But adopted and step-parents tend to use various reasons such as an income or to add to an income when those aren't significant reasons for taking kids out of a home. Too often it is done without the court's permission, and anyone inside or outside the family can endanger their lives. If it is without the court's permission, it is committing fraud even when taking them out of state where they weren't born. Non-supportive parents whether adopted, biological, or step-parents tend to take their children for granted when they haven't raised them with ethical values. Without God's guidance and an acknowledgement of prayer, the next generation is too raised without ethical values. This could violate their rights and responsibilities, the neglect ought to be proven. If you can't prove in court the reason for taking the kids out of the home, it is best to let them remain with birth fathers and mothers. The new generation ought to have an advantage over the prior generation, due to better housing and work advancements. Which makes it possible to acquire better transportation to attend church regularly. So much of this is going on, and very little is said about grandparents caring for grandkids. When they ought to be enjoying life to the fullest after retirement. Parents who pray for their kids don't have to worry about how they take care of their kids. If you don't acknowledge the Spirit of God answering prayers, why tell your kids to do right by the Father in heaven? With unbelief in God on the rise, there wouldn't be obstacles to overcome, righteous judgment, honors, or victories. Prayers open doors, it is the first acknowledgement of the needs. In a world where things aren't promised to anyone, it is a must. How trusting God's message can work for your family. Through God's grace, message, and signs you can trust that he had your best interest at heart when he rose from the grave. When you apply biblical truths to God's commands, you can build a quality structure of the home for your kids. After that, through God's gift you can teach them honorable characters, such as obedience to God's commands, hinder not their prayers, honorable of traditional marriages and keeping themselves pure until marriage, observant and sensitive to leadership, respect authority figures, contemplative to get current results, a law-abiding citizen, hard-working and courage to reach the lost. These are just a few honorable characters kids can model. Once parents are accepting of their bonds of communication with family and friends, they can create lasting relationships. All this to say most broken relationships adults experience come from not having supportive parents. When parents are supportive of their kids having friends, more likely the kids can create better bonds that will last. When they aren't supportive, kids tend to not be supportive of them having friends either. For reference of more characters kids can model read Matthew 1 and Luke 2. God's message can help form Christ-like leadership in all of womankind. Yield to authority figures usually parents teach their kids to respect authority while they're toddlers. This is when toddlers are ready to embrace growth and knowledge. When parents hold back the basic tools of life, they don't want to acknowledge them during their teens. Sympathetically, you can tell them that it is okay to yield to authorities.